So I found out that China has been invading India. I mean, really. China is challenging the borders in two northern states of India. In Sikkim, the area is a cold Himalayan region called the Fingers area. And in this other state, Arunachal Pradesh, it is a Buddhist area called Tawang. I mean, really. Why would two emergent economic superpowers who are undoubtedly going to completely dominate the world for the next century threaten their obvious ascendancy to global domination by trifling over a few cliffs, pastures, and rocks in the Himalayan mountains. You know, I need to find out. If there's going to be a war, it is obvious that, you know, China is going to try to take eastern India through invading two areas, Tawang in Arunachal Pradesh and Sikkim. There have been incursions. There are land claims, territorial claims by the Chinese. China doesn't give up claim on territory. China has always proved to be unfriendly and uncomfortable neighbor. The Chinese claim Tawang. I have been to Arunachal Pradesh. Chinese incursion there, you see, a large chunk of land, a huge chunk of land, they are claiming, Chinese are claiming. Transmissions are happening in these areas. Uh, Lungchu, Asafila, uh, Midyuthun, these are the areas, and you have the Tawang. And their position in Sikkim is ambivalent, I think. And then you have Sikkim here, yeah. which was recognized as uh, part of India but uh, by the Chinese, but no major momentum. In fact, last four or five months, there has been a forward thrust of the Chinese in the Sikkim area yeah. at a place called Fingertip. Right. The border areas are always open to interpretation. In the, in the North Sikkim, there is a small uh, area known as Five Finger. So one fine morning, Chinese troops, they just walked into it. Earlier, China had surprised India by laying claims on the small tract of land in North Sikkim and had threatened to demolish the existing stone structure there. Yes, there is uh, trouble on a daily basis there. Short of firing at each other, they had done everything else. They had had fisticuffs, they had pushed each other. The Indian army moves around with a banner like this, yeah. which says, we are both friendly countries. As per agreement signed in April 2005, both sides must withdraw simultaneously. Please go back. It was the Beijing Olympics and the Tibetans were demonstrating, so of course the Chinese wouldn't let Westerners into Tibet. So I couldn't even go into Tibet to even talk to a Chinese person about whether they were invading India or not. Let's uh, call the Chinese once again. Here we go, Chinese Embassy. So I spoke with the press secretary for the Embassy of China yesterday, and he said that there's absolutely no problem. Obviously, he doesn't want to see any controversy being uh, raised. I'm not a diplomat, I, I'm an academic. So let me put it uh, bluntly. Tawang is in contention between India and China. And the rough estimates are Chinese moved in roughly 13 kilometers inside the Indian claimed areas. When the real story broke, Sometime last year, um, everyone realized that China had moved, claimed about 10 kilometers of land. From a strategic point of view, they captured those strategic heights. So the Chinese are sitting here and the Indian formations are somewhere here. So the Chinese have an advantage in terms of the firepower. The Chinese military estimates that if they can do a pincer attacks, uh, possibly they can cut off Indian Northeast uh, from that of India. It's a very narrow corridor that links the rest of the Northeast with India. If I was a Chinese general and uh, if I were to go to war with India, this is what I would do. Pincer attacks could be this way. Uh, from Sikkim, uh, from the Chumbi Valley, Yatung County and Chumbi Valley, and one uh, attack possibly from the Tawang, uh, Arunachal Pradesh areas. I mean, can you believe this? Intelligent, educated people rationally talking about a war between China and India? The Chinese uh, don't want India to become a world power. They don't want a competitor. They want a contained India. And they want to put India under pressure. And these incursions are a very good way of doing that. Our take on the incursions, I mean, like, come on. I mean, they shouldn't happen, right? And uh, when they happen, I mean, what I would want is for the Indian Army to be more open about it. Because unless it is reported often, we won't know if any territory is actually lost to China. 
I don't want India to go into a war with China, right? That's not something I propose. Uh, it's at least deal with them as equals. Why does the world's largest democracy have to go out of its way to, to please one of the largest uh, authoritarian uh, systems that you have? It would be wise for China and India to sit across the table and find out a solution which will be lasting and beneficial to the people of both the countries. China and India are the two masters of transcending their national boundaries. They are everywhere in the world at once. India through dominating global information and China through mastering global manufacturing. But at the same time, they are fighting for real hard national boundaries. In a world so interconnected by money, media, and the movement of people, border disputes seems so 20th century.